Hey, I'm Ryan from Ron's Marine. I'm gonna be doing your walkthrough on your new boat. First thing you're gonna to need to know about your new boat is how to take it to the lake. So we're gonna go over your trailer, gonna kinda of run through the safety, the basics of it, how to tow it, hook up, stuff like that. And then we'll get you on your way and out the door. So first things first, you're gonna pull your truck up to the latch here. Make sure you're in line as much as possible. If you are a little bit off, you can move it around just a little bit. So as long as your ball is a two inch ball and for your two inch receiver, you're going to lower the trailer down until the ball is fully connected into the receiver, just like that. And then your stand here will come all the way up and be clear. So you'll take your latch, as long as your ball is in all the way, pull the latch lever, push down on the latch itself until it clicks, and it's all locked in. Then you'll take your keyway here, put it through the hole, and lock that in place as well. Okay, next step, you'll take your safety chains here, unwind them from the trailer, and you wanna go across to the opposite pocket on your truck, and then clip them in. Just like that. Okay, you wanna leave them loose so that when you turn, they don't bind up. After that, you have your connector here, whether it's four pin, five pin, or the seven round, it all connects the same with your receptacle here. If you don't have the seven pin and you have a four on your trailer, you can get an adapter to go in between those two. So you get your adapter and you plug it in. It only goes in one way. Make sure it's seated properly, your connections are good. And you lift up the slot here. This also only goes in one way. You have a slot up top. You push that in all the way and make sure it's there. And then this will sit on top and lock it in place. Okay, you wanna make sure everything's connected. All these are hooked up. So part of your safety checklist for traveling with your boat is you're gonna make sure that your winch is really tight with the hook on your boat here up against the roller. You wanna make sure that it is all the way, it won't move and this won't bounce when you're going down the highway, okay? This here for your trailer jack, you have a handle which you'll pull out and then you'll move your trailer jack forwards so that the wheel is up in the back. So if the trailer jack falls for any reason, your wheel will just spin and it won't cause any damage to it. On your way by, you'll check your lights. Make sure they're all working. You have marker lights along the front as well as on your fender here and we'll get to your wheel. So your wheel tire pressures should be on a sticker in the front, or this should be around 50 to 60 PSI maximum. You're also gonna wanna pull your bearing buddy cap and check to make sure that the oil is, or the grease is fully in and you have greased it and is moving freely and good to go. You can check it every now and then. It doesn't have to be all the time. If you go out of the water and you notice something's running, then you should check it for sure, okay? You can keep going around the side of the boat here. You'll check your marker lights on the back as well. The lights on the truck are on the uh, running light setting, so then all of your lights should be lit up. You're gonna need a second person to help you out, either in the truck or back here, to make sure that your brake lights work and your turn signals work. So you can get the person in the truck to check your brake lights, make sure they all come on, and then you're gonna wanna check left turn signal on the right turn signal and make sure everything's functioning properly. These here are your transom straps. They go from your boat to your trailer. So you're gonna check and make sure these are tight. You have Velcro on the front to release the strap here. And then you release it just by lifting this lever. You wanna pull it just a little bit snug and then you'll tighten down this lever right here until it clicks, just like that. Then you can Bundle up the extra slack on itself, and then use the Velcro to hold it in place. Once it's all tucked away, you can grab on it and make sure it's not going anywhere, okay? You're gonna check and see if your motor is trimmed all the way up. If you have a transom saver, or you have a trim lock on the other side, you wanna make sure it is on either of those to protect it from bouncing down the highway. 
Your drain plug here during travel needs to be out so that it can drain while you're on the road. You'll put it in when you unload the boat, but it needs to be out for travel purposes. If it doesn't have something holding it in the boat, you can throw it in a cup holder or in your truck. You just have to make sure that you know where it is. Over here on this side of your motor is the trim lock. So if you don't have your transom saver, you can use your trim lock and then trim it down until it stops moving, okay? So we're gonna be going over your motor. First things first, when you get there, you're gonna to wanna to undo your transom saver on either side. You'll undo the strap and release the pressure. Then you have trim buttons on the side of your motor right here. You'll trim it up just a little bit while holding your transom saver to release pressure. Then this guy will actually come off and spin and come out. Now you can put this out of the way in the truck wherever you want to put it. And then you can trim your motor down and get ready for launch. Then you can make sure your hull plug is in. Just like this. You push it in and then spin the nut to tighten it so that it seals. After that, you can pull up this lever right here. If you pull out on it, it'll unlatch your cowl here and pull off your cowl. So when you have your cowl off, you'll notice a couple things here. So you have an oil fill up top right there. It's the big yellow dipstick. You have over here, your dipstick here for checking the oil level. And you have your oil filter right here. Around on the other side, we have our fuel filter, which is this guy right here. And then service intervals and information is up top. So once yearly, you will do lower unit oil changes and you'll have a drain down here in the bullet. And you'll have a screw up here as well. In order to do this, you undo this screw down here. If you're just checking, that's enough to dribble some out and you can check your lower unit oil. If you're changing the unit oil completely, you pull this drain and then pull this upper drain here and all of your fluid will run out. After that, you'll pump up new fluid through the bottom until it starts coming out the top. Then you'll put in the top screw in order to stop it from coming out and then you'll put in the bottom screw again. And then after that, your lower unit oil change is done, okay? Once yearly, you're gonna to wanna to change your engine oil. This is your drain here, this plug. And then you'll change your engine oil filter with it every year. You can check with your dipstick and then fill through this yellow plug right here. So the sticker on the top here, will go over your service schedule. It'll say every year you have to do the lower unit oil, engine oil and filter, and then give it a good once over. And then up top on the other side, it'll say every three years or 300 hours. And that'll be your water pump impeller and, and bigger maintenance items. Okay. So we'll put the cowl back on here. You'll want to slide the front in first after you get it over the motor. You'll slide it past the latch and then towards the back until it's fully seated. And you'll pull down until you hear a click just like that. And now your cowl is back on. In the back here, when your motor is running, you have a valve that spews water out. This is called your telltale. When your unit is running, water will come out of here and that is how you know that water is pumping through your motor and your motor is being cooled. The break-in period on this motor is gonna be two or three tanks of gas. We recommend three full tanks of premium fuel, fresh premium fuel to be run through your motor before it is broken in fully. During this break-in period, you'll want to have varying ranges of throttle and then use it in full operation for the duration of its life. So next we'll go over your interior. We'll start with the captain's chair right here. So the captain's chair itself has a lock for the swivel down here. You pull up on there and then you can swivel your captain's chair. When it goes around to the front, it will lock in place and you can fold down your chairs and they have a snap on the back where you can snap them shut, it's good for transport. It won't come up, okay? 
So after that, you have a light here that goes in a couple brackets on the side. You pull out the light, and this is your stern light here. Your stern light will go in this slot. There's a screw and a slot on the inside, so it only goes in one way. Once you push this all the way down, then you can push the plastic piece down and thread it in until it's snug, and then your stern light's in and good to go. You can flip this up if you wish. When master power is on, you have some interior lighting that you can turn on and off. These here are your jump seats. You have snaps that connect this piece to the boat itself, and you can lift up your jump seat here, and you have a seat for anybody that wants it. Under your seats, you have storage. On this side here, you have storage here, underneath, and then the same on this side as well. Pull up the bottom seat and you have some storage in there. Once you're done, you can fold down the flaps and then snap the curtains shut. This here is going to be your external gas tank. Okay. Your fill is here and then you have a level. Underneath this will be the bilge pump and pump for the live well. Next, we have some rod storage on the side here. You have two spots for fishing rods. And for more rod storage, you have a locker in the middle of your boat here for all of the rest of it. There's a curtain in the middle of your seats here. And behind here will be your batteries. If you have more than one battery, they will be side by side. Again, you can snap the curtain closed and seal everything up. So over on this side, you have your passenger's chair. This one swivels without a lock, but again, you can fold it down and then snap it closed for transport. You have a cup holder, a bunch of locations on your boat, and you have your glove box here. Typically in your glove box will be a spare plug manuals, cables, spare keys, stuff of that nature. The windshield has two rotating latches. You spin them either direction until they're away from the inside edge here. And you can open up your windshield carefully and place it down on the side. If you're traveling or you want some extra security, you can snap it closed here so that it stays in place. Afterwards, you can move to the front here. So on the front, you have some storage and your live well here. So this live well, you open it up. There is a vent here that you open up to allow water in. Once you press the switch on your dash and activate your live well, water will come in here. You have a live bait bucket that can be removed. And then you have a drain on this side here, limiting the level for you. You can close all this up and you have a bunch of storage compartments in here. This one is for a battery for your trolling motor if you wish to install one. And then you have lockable storage on either side of the middle here. You have the option of a jump seat for the middle. And then these guys turn and then press down to lock and latch into place. Up front, you have another of the push lights. This is a plug for an optional trolling motor install. Behind this curtain is some extra storage. If you do have a trolling motor, this is great for the foot pedal or controls. And you can button it back up again. And you have a light for the front for the bow. Again, it has the screw and the slot. It only goes in one way. Push down until it's seated and then turn the plastic until it's tight. And then your bow light is in. You can then flip this up and now your navigation lights are set. If you choose to have your jump seat installed in the front here, 
Your seat comes just like this with a post and a receptacle here. You slide the post into the slot and then slide it down. When you spin it, it will lock into place and you know it's set. Then after that, it functions as a normal jump seat and you have a lever up here underneath the seat on the right side in order to swivel and move as you're fishing. So we're gonna go over your controls quick. Your key switch is here. You have a spare key as well. And then you have a float that you can hold your insurance in. Next, we're gonna go over your tether switch. It's the switch that says run. The switch slides down and the tether comes out. You can attach it to your life jacket. Then you can place it back inside and clip up the red tab. That means your motor will run, okay? Next, we're gonna go over the trim switch. So on your handle, you have trim up and down. And then there's a red handle on the, the throttle there that you can go forwards for forwards. And then you press down and go backwards again to go to reverse and the middle is neutral, okay? You press the throttle only button here to stop motion your propeller, but to get throttle response out of your motor. Okay, so we're gonna go through the console on this boat. It's a Crestliner 1600 Vision. Uh, we're gonna start off with the switches here. So you have your master power. Before you start the boat, you're gonna wanna make sure that that's on and everything works. Um, the only way that your electronics will turn on is if that master power is on, because we wire them directly to that so that you don't leave them on and drain your battery after a day or whichever. Um, you got your nav lights right here. So when you're out cruising around at nighttime, make sure that those are on and working. You got your live wall switch. You're gonna wanna turn that on, fill the live wall up with nice cold water for the fish. Uh, you got your bilge pump. It's a welded hole. You don't gotta worry about any rivets leaking. Um, accessory switch, if you put any other electronics, uh, lights or so be it, whatever it might be in the boat. And then you got your horn. Um, you got your power switch. We have a Humminbird Helix 5 in this boat. Um, very easy to use, very basic and straightforward. I'll just turn it on here for you. All right, so on this boat, we have it rigged up with a Humminbird Helix 5. Uh, it's a sonar GPS model. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you a line that shows you the bottom of the lake. It's gonna tell you your depth on it right here. You can have it set in feet or meters. Uh, your water temp, which can also be turned from uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. Super simple to use when you wanna go over to the GPS screen. You just press the view button and it'll bring your in on over to it here. Uh, it's not gonna work because we're inside a building right now, so there's no GPS signal, but when you're out on the water, it shows you where all the rocks are, shows you different depth contours, all that. When you're on the GPS screen, you can zoom in and out just with these two buttons here, the plus and the minus. Um, you can mark waypoints. Uh, obviously it's not gonna work in here again because as I said, we're in a building. So um, if you want to adjust your settings on it, you just click the menu button here You'll have sonar settings, navigation settings, chart settings, uh, hummingbird chart settings. Uh, this is your setup screen here. So you can adjust your depth uh, if you want it in feet, fathoms, or meters, water temp, Fahrenheit, or Celsius. Uh, if you press the menu button once when you're on the sonar screen, it'll bring this little tab up here. You can adjust your 2D sensitivity, your contrast. You can adjust the range of depth that you want it to go to. You can also adjust your chart speed and different sonar colors. Obviously there's a lot of different settings you just kind of have to play around with them yourself when you're out on the water. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can refer back to your Humminbird manual, which this does come with, or you can give us a call. If you have any questions, you can feel free to call the shop here at 237-5800 and ask for your salesman or a technician. We'll be happy to help you out. Otherwise, you can check out your owner's manual. It's a very good resource, has lots of information for you. And then last thing, you can check mercury.com. They have a bunch of videos explaining things. It's a really good idea to get to know your boat that way as well.